Hello and welcome back to Krabby Crossing. So today's video is all about fishing. First off, why do you want to fish in the first place? One reason to fish is so that you can complete your museum. Not only is it beautiful to walk through a completed museum, but you can also get a cool poster from Blathers to hang up in your house. Some people choose not to donate anything to Blathers so that the museum can stay a tent for design purposes. But there are drawbacks to this that you want to consider when you are thinking about what you want to do on your own island. If you don't upgrade the museum tent into a building, you won't be able to get Brewster and his cafe when your island reaches a three-star rating. The second reason that you would want to fish is that there are a lot of Nook Mile achievements that are related to fishing. These include angling for perfection, island ichthyologist, trash fishing, and cast master, as well as Nook Miles Plus tasks that are as simple as catching five fish or even one fish in particular. All of these are fairly easy ways to earn Nook Miles, which you can use to pay off your moving fees or redeem for quality of life upgrades like more pocket space, fun stuff like new hairstyles, or tons of DIY recipes for things that you can craft to decorate your island, and even Nook Mile tickets, which you can use to get more materials or even go on villager hunt. The third reason that you would want to fish is so that you can sell the fish you catch for bells. The fourth reason is that if you complete your Critterpedia, even if you don't donate any of the fish to the museum, you will still get the DIY recipe for the golden fishing rod, which is from the tool collection with the most durability. The fifth reason that you would want to catch fish is so that you can have CJ make you models of the fish you catch, which you can then use to decorate your home or your island. The sixth reason that you would want to fish is so that when you unlock cooking at three stars, you will be able to use the fish that you catch as ingredients in some of the recipes you can make. Once you cook a dish, you can either use it as a decoration or you can eat it and fill up your belly faster than if you just ate fruit straight from the tree. This comes in handy if you need to move trees or rocks. So how do you get our fishing rod? You get the DIY for a flimsy fishing rod from Tom Nook when you take the DIY workshop from him on the first day on your island that is synced up in real time. This version of the fishing rod takes five tree branches, which you can get either from collecting them off the ground or you can shake hardwood and cedar trees to get them that way. Once you get the DIY recipe from Tom Nook, you will also be able to purchase already made flimsy fishing rods from Timmy and Tommy. The drawback to this version of fishing rod is that it breaks after about 10 uses, which means that you have to craft them pretty often. When you are collecting materials to build Nook's Cranny, one of your villagers will mention the Pretty Good Tools Recipes Bundle. You can redeem this for Nook Miles at the Nook Stop in Resident Services. This bundle includes the stronger version of the shovel, the fishing rod, the net, and the watering can. You will also be able to purchase the stronger version of the fishing rod from Timmy and Tommy once their shop is upgraded to the larger store. There's also a golden fishing rod, which I am currently working on getting the recipe for, so I will go into how to get that DIY in a future video. If you are interested in learning more about how to get the golden fishing rod, then subscribe to my channel so you don't miss it. So where can you fish? You can fish in any body of water on your island or Nook Mile Islands or Cap'n Islands. These are the specific places where you can find fish. Your pier, a a pond, the river, a clifftop river, the river mouths, the sea, and the sea when it's raining. So how do you catch a fish? The first step is to hold your fishing rod. This can be achieved either by selecting the rod you want to use from your pockets and then selecting the hold option, or if you have the tool ring, you can press the up button on your left Joy-Con and then select the tool you want and press A to hold that tool. The second thing you want to do is walk do not run to any body of water that I just mentioned and look for a fish shadow in the water. There are six different fish shadows that you can see on the screen. I have a link in the description where I found this photo and more information about them. There are a few other shadows that aren't in this picture, including the really skinny shadows, which end up being eels, and the shadows with the fin on top that are either the shark or a sucker fish. Each fish shadow will give you a clue to the type of fish that the fish shadow represents. I will go into more detail on this in a minute. So next you want to position yourself so that you 
are able to throw the bobber in front of the fish so that they can see it. You throw the bobber by pressing the A button and if the bobber doesn't land where the fish can see it, you can press A again and take the bobber out of the water and try repositioning yourself again. This does take a little bit of practice and depending on where you are, it can be tricky to get the bobber in the correct spot even if you are an Animal Crossing fishing expert. You will know when the fish can see the bobber because they will suddenly look alert and then they will swim towards your bobber. They will usually nibble on the bobber a few times first and the nibble looks and sounds like this. You will also feel a very slight vibration on your controller if you have that feature turned on. It is so slight though that you might not even notice it. Eventually your fish will bite, which is when you want to press the A button to reel in your fish. For the longest time, I thought you had to hold down the A button in order to keep reeling in the fish, but your character still finishes reeling in the fish even if you just press the A button versus holding it down. You can tell the difference between a nibble and the bite because the controller will vibrate more noticeably the bobber will go all the way under the water and the sound will change to this sound here. Once you get the hang of it, you will figure out a method that works best for you, but the way that has worked the best for me is that I turn up the game sound so that I can clearly hear all of the fishing noises. And once I know the fish is swimming towards my bobber, I close my eyes and just listen to the different sounds and press the A button when I hear the bite sound. This helps me a lot with timing. If I don't do it this way, I usually press A a little too early and scare the fish away. If you are working on catching a more rare fish, Sometimes you need more precise timing. So if you are having trouble with timing playing in docked mode, I recommend playing in handheld mode so the Joy-Cons are directly connected to your Switch so you can eliminate the delay of the controller sending the signal wirelessly to the Switch. So how do you know where to find a specific fish? If you are looking for a specific fish, there are a few ways that you can figure out where to find that fish. My favorite, favorite, favorite method is using the AC h.guide app which I downloaded to my phone. I've talked about this app in previous videos but I will put a link in the description for where to find it. You can also find various guides online by searching keywords such as Critterpedia Guide ACNH and you will likely find a website that has information sorted in a way that makes sense to you. For this video all of my examples will be from the app because it is my preferred method and I like that I can check off the critters that I've already caught and then I can filter my list down to the information that I'm looking for at the time. So I usually like to remove all of the creatures that I have already caught and then filter it further so that I can only see the creatures that are catchable when I'm playing the game. This makes it a lot easier to focus on exactly what I need and not waste any extra time. So the reason that I mention all of this is that a majority of the fish in the game, they only spawn during certain months of the year, during certain times of day, in specific locations, and even sometimes only when it's raining on your island. It is necessary to know all of this information as well as the size of the shadow you are looking for so that you don't waste any time on the wrong type of fish. So all of the guides that I have found when I was looking, they all have all the information that I had talked about previously, and they also include how many bells that you can sell each of these fish for at Nook's Cranny. If you are looking for a specific fish that is currently not catchable at the time you are playing, you have a few options. The first option is to figure out what time that fish is catchable and under which conditions, and then you can just wait until it's that time and then try to catch it. The second option is that you can go to a friend's island that is at a different time of day or a different season than you, which can be achieved if they live in a different time zone or their island is on um, the opposite hemisphere view. So if you're in northern hemisphere, then you can travel to a friend's island who is on the 
the southern hemisphere and vice versa. The third thing you can do is if you have three stars, you might be able to get lucky on a Kappen Island. If you are looking for fish in a specific season that you've already experienced on the island you're playing on. The fourth thing you can do, which is not for everyone, but it might be for you, you can time travel to that specific time of year or time of day to get that specific fish. So you know what kind of fish you want to want to catch. You know that they are available in the pond or the pier or whatever. You know exactly where they where they spawn, but there is no shadow there. So how do you get the shadow? How do you get the fish to spawn so you can catch it? Well, you can make bait. You make bait by digging up manila clams on your beach. So you may have noticed they are the little black holes in the sand that squirt water and then they disappear and then they come back again and do it all over. But you just wanna dig where that black hole and the water squirt appeared and you will dig up the clam. If you don't, if you dig and you don't get the clam but you saw it in that general area, either wait for it to spray again or just keep digging in that general area to find the clam. So the first time that you dig up a clam, you will get the DIY recipe for fish bait. And basically it is one manila clam equals one bag of fish bait. So a tip that I have for you is that when you are digging for a lot of clams, make sure you fill in the holes that you dig so that the new clams have plenty of space to spawn on your beach. So once you make the fish bait, you can go up to any body of water, select the fish bait and select scatter food and the fish will spawn. If you were looking for a specific size fish and the bait spawns the wrong size then you can just throw another bag of bait on the fish to scare that fish away and a new size will spawn in that place so you can keep doing this until you get the correct size shadow that you're looking for and I know this kind of seems like it's a waste of bait but it's not it's the best advice that I have found I've tested it myself I saw it on somebody's um, video from like two years ago. But basically, if you do it where you throw bait and then you get the wrong size fish and then you try to catch that fish or you scare that fish away by like running around near the water and then you throw more bait, it is completely possible that you'll get the same size fish over again. But if you throw bait at the wrong size fish, then you will definitely get a different size shadow the next time. So now we know you can get bells for fishing and a lot of people they need bells so how do you get the most bells for your fish once you are at the point of selling fish the absolute best method is to save all of them and you can either put them in your home storage you can stack them up in a room in your house or you can stack them up somewhere on your island and then you just wait for CJ to come. He usually comes about once a week and the acnh.guide app actually you has a function where you can track all of the people who come, all of the characters who come and visit your island so you can know kind of when you might be expecting uh, CJ to your island if that is something that you want to go through the trouble of doing. So if you sell them to CJ, then he will give you the most bells for each fish in the game. So if you have the time and the space to do that, then I definitely recommend that method. But if you don't have the time or you don't have the space for it, then the next best method is to go into Nook's Cranny and sell your fish directly to Timmy and Tommy. The absolute worst way to sell your fish is to sell them in the Nook's Cranny drop box. So you get the least amount of bells for selling fish this way. Basically, you get the amount that Timmy and Tommy would buy your fish for, and then they take a 20% convenience fee off of that and then they that's what they that's what they the money they give you for that item and it's it's not just fish it's for everything and then they will deposit it directly into your savings account the next morning the only time that i would recommend that you sell to the drop box is if you do not have the space for storing them until the shop opens back up or CJ comes to your island 
and the shop is closed. If you are new to Animal Crossing New Horizons and you're looking for more tutorial style videos like this one, check out my Animal Crossing tips playlist on the left side of the screen for all of the videos I have made so far. You can also leave your questions in the comments and I might make a video about it.